crow because uh, certain types of animals, uh, the single-footed animals like them, represent people who do things without any kind of reason and discretion. So then many times in the Hindu scripture when you see a crow around, it's not directly the wash of the crow, but it just is a symbol of reason. And um, I try to bring in all these symbolism in my in lessons and make the world a better world. Philip Moore's best known work is his 1763 monument, which commemorates one of the biggest and most successful slave revolts in the Southern Caribbean. True to his commitment to symbolism, Moore expresses the spirit rather than the physical likeness of the slave leader, Cuffy, and the result is a symbol of strength, rootedness, and independence. If you're living in a house, you are part of the house, the house is a part of you. So if somebody tells you to do the portrait of a man, you're going to do a psychic portrait or a symbolical portrait of a man, you're not going to just do something photographic. But you're going to do everything with the habits of the man, the characters of the man, his, his job, his work, his family, must be incorporated in the painting so as to make a total imagery of the man. Well, uh, I had this idea even before I went to the United States. And I did, since 1972, I came to acknowledge that man is a part of the landscape and the landscape is a part of the man. I will study the symbolism of all the different religions and try to equate some, bring some unison among them that I can put new meanings to old mythologies. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's why you see I put so much um, symbolism in the 1763 monument to set people to think. But when, we, because when you start to think about yourself and love yourself and see God in your own individual religion, you will love a next man, but I don't think we can love people except we love ourselves. I get something like a little sleep fell on me, and I see the pattern, the color, and everything on this until I finish this painting. And why I call it so important because the head, the tail of the serpent is the head of the dove. The head of the dove here stands for purity love and simplicity, and as you go upward, the powers of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding come down upon you. So P Pablo Picasso painted the peace dog, a white dog with an olive branch in his mouth. Mm -hmm. But since then, we had about a thousand wars. But peace shall not come, not until man can combine the elements of wisdom, I mean love, purity, simplicity, with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And you have to work your way like the wriggling movements of the serpent. It's not something going to drop on your lap. The artist and, and the inventor come now and then to stimulate people's imagination and make them to know they are noble beings, man. That's what you see in the 1763 monument to put that figure. I'm squeezing the, de the neck of a pig and the neck of a dog. Ignorance and greed is the word of the man's eternal enemies, you see? And except we know how to purge ourselves from those things, you know, we're going to remain in slavery a long, long time. So I feel that man is actually an ancient soul in a modern body. And the things that I trust, try to express my art, I, whenever I hold a piece of wood in my left hand, it seems to me if I'm holding the mind of the world in my hand. And when I engrave anything up with it, I'm putting the messages uh, I want in the work. And then automatically, in time to come, that will act as a psychic force to help stimulate the creativity within other people. <laughs>